this. This is awesome to be here on this occasion. This is Mother's Day. Yeah. Mother's Day. Lord. And, and, and we give honor to our mothers, as uh, Dr. Savage has already said. Yeah. Uh, without a mother, we wouldn't be here. Amen. We would not be here. And we are thankful for our mothers. And uh, it's just awesome to see all the beautiful mothers oh, that have come to be here with their children. We recognize that there's still Jesus. those who will be arriving. And uh, we're just thankful to God. Some of you, your mothers are still present in this world. Yeah. There are others that have had mothers that uh, were very near and dear, but they have uh, gone on uh, to be with the Father. And uh, we know that they're in good hands. Amen. We, we sit back and we appreciate them. We appreciate them. And then there are some that have had uh, mothers who were not mothers of blood. Lord. But just mothers who have stepped in and still steered and guided yeah. and cared. Because, you know, in, in Christ we find a mother for the motherless and a father yeah. for the fatherless. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. A brother for the brotherless and a sister for the... We, we find family in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. So that's an awesome thing. But we really appreciate uh, those who... who took the time Lord to Jesus. mother us through life, yeah. help us to be who we are, yeah. and we pray that that uh, you just always, always have that special place to remember mother. Uh, I'm I'm uh, especially honored to to uh, have someone uh, special, and you know last week I introduced uh, to you my, my wife uh, Zania, and. Um, She's an awesome mother. She's an awesome mother. That was one of the qualities I noticed uh, about her as I was paying attention, because I was paying attention. <laughs> Amen. Um, but but uh, there was somebody else. We were we were talking. We were in a conversation, and we were talking um, about her mom and, and personality and all that. And we were talking about worship environments and different ones. Lord and I Jesus. said, "Boy, I know if we." Proud of that, what she be like, fit right in the amen as well. Thank you. Come on. Yeah, because of personality. I just, you know. And the next thing you know, somehow later on that day, it was the same day, and neither one of us prompted it. But somehow we ended up getting the call and found out she's coming to worship. I got all excited. Amen. <laughs> so, so my mother in law is here. Lord, uh, yeah. I'm not going to draw too much attention to the amen. Yeah. Amen. And so we're going to do something a little special afterward, too. Uh, I out of them, uh, but I'm just excited this morning. It's good to see you. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you. Uh, y'all, we, we're going to study the Word of God, but y'all know I got to sing a song. Hey, hey, Amen. Sing on, brother. You can, you can get started by turning over. You can turn your Bibles over to Exodus, the second chapter. You can turn your Bibles over to Exodus, the second chapter. That's what we're going to look at. And, uh, but I don't know about you, but I believe my God is awesome. If you believe your God is awesome, say amen. 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 My God is awesome. There's nothing second to my God. I'm telling you. Yeah. He is awesome. He's powerful. He's worthy. He truly is. And so therefore, you know, we're going to get our praise on and talk about how my God is awesome now. If this thing, amen, let's be clear. And uh, then we, we're going to sing it because I... I I, I, I like to have some form of control. My God, it's awesome. I guess I'll turn the power on, huh? What do y'all think? What do y'all think if I turn the power on, it might work? Just right. I, I think it just might work. There you go. Amen. It's about power. Amen. Amen. You can have apparatus in your hand and no power. Amen. But now we have power. And if y'all don't mind, y'all know, I have to stand to sing. I do. And, and those of you that can stand. And sing, amen. Come on, stand with me. Yeah. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can hide me from the rain. Oh, Lord, my God is awesome. He heals me when I roll. Give me strength when I Forever he will reign. Come on, y'all. My God is all. 
we can assure you that the significance is the same. The Bible says, now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. But she saw that he was a fine child. Some texts say beautiful child. She hid him for three months. Come on now. But when she could hide him no longer. No longer. When she could hide him. Yeah. No longer. Come on now. She got a papyrus basket for him. Lord Jesus. Coated it with tar and pitch. Oh. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Come on. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds. Yes, she did. Sent her female slave to get it. Go get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mom. <laughs> So the girl went and got the babies. Yes, you uh -huh. did. Uh-huh. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me. I'll pay you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. She named him Moses. Uh -huh. <laughs> saying, I drew him out of the water. Yeah. A subject that I believe runs parallel with this text. Let me call your attention to the subject. Let go and let God. Amen. Amen. Let go. You may be seated. Let go and let God. This is the beginning of a unique book. It's the second book in our canon of scriptures. Exodus. Yes, sir. Exodus actually is the Greek rendering of a description of what's occurring in this, in this awesome book. And that is that God is delivering his people Come on now. From bondage. All right. Exodus just means the way out. That's it. That's what it means. The road out. <laughs> Path out. In the second book of the Bible, we, we learn that God delivers his people. He cares. He cares for whatever situation you find yourself in. Yes, he does. And there's nothing that you can be in right now that he can't get you out of. Amen. Amen. Because our God is awesome. Yes. There's a story of an individual by the name of Moses who becomes a key character mm -hmm. in the story of the Exodus. He made a strong connection with God. But I want to know that God actually knew him. Yes. Hey, go back. He knew himself. Go back. Because yeah. God, I believe, has purpose yeah. for people. He does. And he works things so that his purposes can be accomplished. He doesn't yeah. overcome our free will to do it. But God is wise. So wise. His ways are higher than higher. our ways. Yeah. His thoughts are higher, higher. than our thoughts. Yeah. And I thank God. Amen. That he's in control. Amen. You see, here we see the making of a great leader. Moses was an awesome leader. Lord, he was a recognized leader. 
He was someone that even at the time where Jesus was on the, the mountain of, uh, of ascension or transfiguration, yeah. we, we begin to see that Moses appeared there with him. Elijah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. He's an awesome leader. Yes, he is. Yes. He was purpose, but God also providentially protected him. Oh, Lord. God prepared him. God prompted him Lord to do what his will was. Oh, Lord. You know, when we begin to look at that, a sense of calling and a purpose, some people begin to question how much uh, God knows in relation to that. But we begin to see that, that God has always had plans, but his plans is what he knows. They, they work because of what he knows about other people <laughs> and their behavior. <laughs> And so because of what he knows and his, his, see, God is outside of space and time. Yeah. Is eternal. So yeah. therefore, he's able to accomplish his will. In other words, there's never any weapon that can form against us that can prosper because we have a God that's already working his will through all things. And he knows everything that you're going to face. He knows about how the free will of individuals is going to act on individuals. But even though he knows your heart, he knows your frame, yeah. and he's still able to accomplish what he wants in your life. Yeah. Amen. That's Amen. right. Amen. We know that God is in control even when we look back at other individuals. Jeremiah. Yeah. In Jeremiah, the first chapter in verse 5, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew, I knew you. you. Yeah. Before you were born, he says, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah was a prophet from the time even before he was born. Long time. Yes, Lord. That shows you the wisdom of God and the providence yeah. of God. Isaiah had the same experience, the same kind of understanding. For in Isaiah 49 and 5, it says, And now says the Lord, who formed me from the womb to be his servant. Yeah, Amen. yeah. We see Paul saying the same kinds of things. And even when we look at Jesus Christ, as he would interact with his disciples, we see him over and over and over beginning to quote the prophets concerning how his life would be. Yeah. God knew. God knew. God has power. He is omniscient. And God knows. Yes, he does. He knows what he'll do. Lord Jesus. But he knows his plans for you. Lord. <coughs> you know what? As we look at the making of this great leader, we recognize that we have to honor a great mother. <coughs> her name was, we many call her Jacobed. Lord Some would Jesus. say that the Hebrew pronunciation would probably be uh, <laughs> Her name actually meant the Lord is glory. It's interesting how names are so important in, yes. in the Word of God. Y'all know that. Yes. Every name is significant. Even when it came to Adam and his wife, Adam gave his name. Amen. Yeah. Names have always been important, but her name is the Lord is glory. <laughs> And I want you to know that God wants to glorify himself in you, in your yes, life. Sir. That's and when it. you begin to have faith in him, that's when he can. Hallelujah. The light of that that shines through you is allowing his light to shine in your life. Yeah. And therefore you glorify our Father. Yes. And cause others to be glorified. Lord Jesus. I think the faith of this mother contributed to making a great leader by the name of Moses. Lord. You see, she sought to save a seed, not knowing that her seed would eventually save her people. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 She was willing to protect this individual. We'll but then also she was willing to relinquish control yes. in order for this individual yes, Lord, to be happened. able to thrive. Yeah. When she relinquished control, she didn't just let him go based on happen chance. <laughs> but she let him go yeah. based on faith in God. Yeah, that's it. And God is able. And you know, sometimes I wonder what she did during those times. I think that she had hope in God, but then I think she had plenty of prayers yeah. that she had to oh, offer Lord, my God. during those times. Yeah. Her name, she was married to a man by the name of Amram. Oh, Lord. She was the daughter of Levi. And she was born to Levi in Egypt. She was born 
in a very difficult time. Ooh. So let me help you to see her situation. Come on Are y'all y'all with me? Come on up. I, I want you to see what was going on because see some of us are in circumstances that might uh, cause us to sometimes feel like we can't move forward and that things are not going to work. But I want you to know I don't care how dismal your circumstances seem. Lord Jesus. If God be for you. Who? There's nothing that can stand against you. Yeah. 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 She gave birth to a son during Ooh. times of affliction. Yeah. The Bible says, verse 1, verse 1, it says, Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and Ooh. gave birth to a son. Yeah. Now, I want you to know the time was inclement because of some negative situations that the text <laughs> informs us about. The Bible says in verse, uh, verse number 8, it says, then a new king to whom Joseph meant nothing came to power in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, let me fill you in. A new king. Evidently there was a young Hebrew boy that individuals identified as a dream. Come on up now. His own brothers looked at him because his head was always... <laughs> full of dreams sure now. and they were envious of him and his dreams because it seems like his dreams would imply that he would be in a position of authority and his brothers would have to bow to him and bow down like that. Yeah. Right. And, and he was the favorite son of his father yeah, and so right. therefore his father would, would do certain things for him he gave him a coat of many colors and, yeah. and, and, and they didn't like that they didn't like the treatment the preferential treatment that it oh seem like he got and so therefore they began to plot against him yes sometimes brothers can plot against brothers. oh yeah and so therefore they plotted against him and and they decided to throw him in a pit and they decided to sell him as a slave lord Jesus. Joseph. if you were to look over in psalm 105 you begin to learn that the bible says that that he was taken with with ankles, ankle shackles and, and, oh. and shackles on his neck. He was yeah. taken like a slave yeah. down to Jesus. Egypt. But it's interesting because when you look at that psalm, it said that God delivered him there. It's interesting that God delivered him in shackles. It's interesting because sometimes we can find ourselves in negative situations and, and we wonder why. But I want you to know that God can work through all things. Oh, yes, he can. Even uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Because Joseph found himself in the pit. Next yeah. thing you know, he's there in the palace interacting with a, a, a wife of a guy by the name of Potiphar. <laughs> and next thing you know, she does something that's wrong that he has to run from yeah, because of his does. allegiance to okay. God. And he ends up in the prison. Yeah. Isn't that messed up when you're trying to do right and you end up in a negative situation? Yeah, yeah. yeah he ended up in a negative situation. In the prison. Lord Jesus. History would suggest as you look at his story that he stayed there, but he had this gift to be able to interpret dreams. <laughs> and because of his gift, it eventually led him back in front of Pharaoh, who had a dream. Right. Yes, he did. And so therefore, Joseph had the ability to interpret his dreams, and basically the dream suggested that there's going to be famine in the land. Famine. And Joseph had the skill and the ability to know how to advise the king on what to do in order to get the nation of Egypt through this particular time of famine in a way that would cause them to thrive and flourish. Lord Jesus. Yeah. And so as a result of his gift, he was exalted to be the second in charge yeah. in Egypt. Yeah. This Hold is Joseph. Yes. Here he came as a slave. Yes, sir. And now he's the yeah. king. All right now. Yeah. And eventually his brothers ended up looking for food and coming to Egypt. Right. Coming on and down. And as a result of him being second in charge, now his whole family was saved. Yeah. He didn't hold anything against them because he recognized that all of it was the hand of God. Amen. He helped them to understand, you know what, you meant to do this to me for harm, but I want you to know God meant it so that I might be able to deliver my people. Yeah, yeah. Amen. God 
God is able to use every circumstance and situation. But now here it is. Years have passed. Yeah. And there's a king that does not remember the contribution. Yeah, the Lord. Yeah. He doesn't know who he is. It doesn't matter about this historical figure and how that this historical figure was connected to these people. Yeah. Instead, now this king, he he is forgetful. And it's unfortunate that sometimes people become forgetful of things that, that individuals have done in the past. That's right. Amen. Sometimes it's unfortunate that we become forgetful of the past accomplishments of other individuals. Sometimes we forget that we're all one. We forget that we ought to work together. We forget and sometimes we get to the point where we start figuring out ways to divide ourselves. From yeah, yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus. This new king. This new king forgot the accomplishments of Joseph and those people. And therefore not only was he unfortunately forgetful, but he was uncomfortably fearful. Amen. You see what happened is if you notice verse 10, it says, it says, go, go back to verse, verse 9. He says, look, he said to his people. The Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Yes. And in the sphere, notice verse 10. It says, come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. Yeah. I don't know why when people look different than we do, or live in different places and different geographies and this and that. Sometimes we become fearful when they're in our territory, in our, amen. Yes. Lord Jesus. And so that was the situation there. And so therefore, he came up with a plan. And I think his plan was unreasonably forceful. Because the Bible says, in fact, it was a three-phase plan. The first phase, it says, verse 11, it says, so they put slave masters over them yeah. to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. Yeah. So what he did is he made their labor harsh. <laughs> if you want to look at verse 13, verse 13 says, and work them ruthlessly. The King James Version says, with rigor. Yeah. In other words, they, they became harsh taskmasters. Task yes. Verse 14, it says they made their lives bitter yeah. with harsh uh, labor and bricks and mortar and with all the hands of the work in the fields. And it says, and all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. Two times in that text. Yeah, yeah. Became very negative to these people. Yeah. The Israelite people. They forgot that, hey, because of this group, we flourished. Yeah. They forgot that, that, that we should be one and that we should be united. But instead, they became intimidated. Yes, they did. Because they had become more numerous. Yeah. And, and the concept of becoming more numerous was just God's hand in the lives of the Israelites. <laughs> and I'll come back to that in a little All bit. All right. The Bible says in verse 12, but the more... They were impressed. The more they multiplied and spread. Lord Jesus. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God's hand was on them to make them flourish. Oh, yeah. There was a second phase because the harder they made them work, it didn't do anything but cause them to grow even more. Multiply, yeah. yeah. And so therefore they came up with another phase. The second phase, it says in, in verse 2, it says, The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose name was Shifra and Pua. It says, when you're helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on uh, the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, yeah. kill him. That's what it says. Oh, yes. If it's a girl, let her live. But if it's a boy, kill him. That's phase two. Yeah. Internal assassins. Yeah. yeah. Try to get those of their own people to begin to kill the male child. 
Yeah. If we can, if we can hinder the male from from developing, if we can hinder the male from from thriving, if we can hinder them, then we've hindered the people. We can stop them from growing. And and, and yeah. sometimes that's been a tactic in 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 our world today to hinder yeah. a group of individuals. And so therefore, we begin to see that here in this text, the e the king of Egypt is trying to figure out how do I stop them. Oh, Jesus. But it's interesting because the midwives, because of their fear of God, wouldn't do that. Oh, they couldn't Lord. kill them. They came up with a story and they said that, that the, 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 the Israelites, able, they give birth before we come there. And so therefore we're not able to, to do that. And so the Bible says in verse 20 that God was kind to the midwives yeah. and he increased the people and they even became more numerous. In fact, these midwives, it says that God even blessed them to have families of their own. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I I'm telling you, when you do God's will, Amen. God will bless you. Oh, yes, you will. When you're his, God blesses you. Oh, Lord. But then, you know, when somebody has it in for you, they don't quit so easily. So there was a third phase to this plan. In verse 22, the Bible says, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all of his people. Yeah. The internal assassins didn't work. They they love God, and because of that, they're going to love us. Isn't that right? If you love God, you love others. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. And, and so therefore, what he did is he gave order to all his people, Yeah. the Egyptians, and he says, every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw him into the Nile. Yeah. But let every girl leave. Leah. All right. <laughs> Moses was born with a bounty on his head, y'all. Yes, he did. Yeah, he wasn't born. At, uh, imagine Jochebed oh, becoming pregnant during that time. And, and beginning to wonder what kind of life is this boy going to have. It's already in danger. Right, Ooh, as soon as, as he parts from my body, they're going to take yes, his life. Yes, Amen. Could you imagine that? Amen. Having that burden? Yes, but, but there's something about her that's, that's unique that, that I want to share. Because she did. She gave birth to this boy. Yes. He wasn't his life wasn't taken immediately, evidently. Amen. And so therefore, there's something about her, the text says. The text says, when she saw that he was a fine child. Yeah. Looking at that, some versions, I think, have a better accurate translation, which says, when she saw his beauty. Could you imagine seeing your first child? <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It's Mother's Day, right? Amen. Just look at your child is to you. You can look at him and say, I remember when you came. No. Amen. I remember when you came. I remember how beautiful. That's an awesome experience. Amen. Yeah, I still remember Jerome came into the world. I said, Oh, Jerome, the king of the throne. <laughs> no, I did. It wasn't nothing like that experience. Oh, Lord. She looked at that child and she saw the beauty of that child. You know, I want to encourage you. In order to be an awesome parent, in order to be a, a good mother, you need to see the beauty and the value of your child. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's a lot of parents that can't see the value of their children. Amen. They can look and see the beauty in each one of their eyes as they begin to behold them. And I'm telling you, in order for you to be a good parent, you need to see that beauty. Yeah. You need to recognize how valuable they are. And she saw how valuable, because see, it's hard, it's difficult to treat a child wrong when you see their beauty. All right, yeah. When you see how awesome this child was, when, when, when Eve actually gave birth to Cain, she says, I re I've received a child from the Lord. Amen. Yeah. She recognized where he came from. Yeah. You got to see the beauty of that child. Number two, not only did she see his beauty, but she considered him worthy to be protected. Yeah. You know that? The Bible says that she hid him for three months. This woman did everything she could to protect her child. And I'm telling you, that's the mark of a good parent. The mark of a good parent is going to protect that child from danger. And I'm telling you, we live in a world 
that's very dangerous. Whoa. The enemy wants to steal, yeah. kill, yeah. and destroy. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's doing everything he can to create a world. Yes. That's adversarial to your children. Yeah, yeah. This individual, Moses, was born in inclement times and in negative times. It was very harsh times, but she wanted to do everything she could to protect him. And so, therefore, she did it by trying to hide him from the reality in which he existed. Yeah. Amen. Three months. Yeah. She tried to hide him. What do you do to try to hide your children from? Yeah. Uh -huh. Lord. The influence Jesus. of the enemy. Yes. What do you do to try to protect them? Lord. From being slain. Come on. You, you know, sometimes we go through life and we don't even take time maybe to discipline children. Amen. The Bible says if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. I think yeah. it's just a rod of discipline. Sometimes we think it's just always, you know, there's other ways to discipline. <laughs> Amen. I'm not saying I'm opposed to the other, but I'm just saying that we need to learn to do it. It says if you do that, you deliver their soul from death. Yeah. It's our responsibility to teach them the right way. Amen. To try to help them to be able to escape from the influences of the enemy. That's our responsibility as parents. Amen. Lord, she did what she could to protect him. But there's something else that I noticed about her that I believe makes me feel that she's worthy of commendation. She knew her limitations. Say it, say it. She knew her limitations. Yeah. The Bible says in verse 3, it says, when she could hide him no longer. No longer. <laughs> yeah. When she could hide him no longer. See, there, there came a time where she tried and she tried, but she recognized there's a point that I don't have the power. Yeah. To be able to continue to do this. Yeah. There's, there's going to come a time in your life where you may want to protect your child. Yeah. You may want to help them in every way that you can, but there's going to come a time in your life where you don't have the ability anymore. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yes, sir. But the thing that I liked about her is she recognized that there's coming a time in her life that she has limitations in relation to that child. But the thing that I like about her is that her limitations didn't stop her from giving her what, giving him what she could. Amen. Yeah, you know, sometimes we might get to our limitations and we just give up. Say it. We just give up. We just let go. All right. But the thing is, is she just didn't give up. She gave him everything that she had the ability to give him. So the Bible says that she got a papyrus basket for him. She coated it with tar and pitch, and she put him in there. She says, look, if i got to put you in the mouth, at least I want you to stay afloat. <laughs> yeah. See, the question is, what are you doing to help your children stay afloat? Yeah. What are you trying to do to keep them alive, to help them as much as you can? See, one of the things that, that, that I say, sometimes I look at my boys, I have three, uh, well, four, eight, I have four because one's a nephew that I raised as my own. But the thing is, I tried to give them something that I know would keep them afloat. Amen. And that which I gave them to keep them afloat was the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That which I helped them to help them to stay afloat in life is I wanted them to know the Lord and the way. So therefore, I trained and nurtured them in the way they should go. And yeah. even though they may depart, the thing is, is they still got something to get back to and yeah. to help them to stay afloat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. I thank God that my parents gave me something to keep me afloat because I'm telling you, I got out there and it seemed like I was about to drown. Yeah. Amen. I got out to a point where it seemed like I was getting ready to go under, but it was that which they gave me to help me to stay afloat that allowed me to be able to yeah. Lord Peter. Lord Peter. Yeah. You've got to give them something to keep them floating on the water. Yeah. And so therefore, that's what she did. Mm -hmm. Now, ultimately, she recognized, I've got to release them. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Ultimately, she recognized that, 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 that I can't control this situation. I've no run to my limitations. Yes. Now, I've got to let them go. Yeah. So the Bible says, then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Yeah. And the Bible says that his sister stood at a distance yeah. to see what would happen. Sometimes there are other people that care about you, but sometimes they can only stand at a distance. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Lord. And sometimes kids get themselves in situations and circumstances that, that, that are very, very negative. And sometimes you, you, you care, but you, you, you at a distance. Yes. I mean, think about it. The Nile has crocodiles. It has all kinds of, of things that are dangerous. But, but she puts she puts him out there. But she yeah. tries to do it. At least she's going to stay afloat. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. And she puts him out there. Yeah. And then the, the, the daughter stands and, 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 and observes to try to be of help. Lord, Ultimately, you know what she's doing? Sense. You know what Jochebed does? Ultimately, what Jochebed doing is doing is that she's trusting in God. Yeah. yeah. She, she recognizes that there comes a time where this thing is outside of my control. Well, I don't have any power over this. No longer. And so now I'm going to release my child into the hand of God. Amen. Yeah. Now the thing is, is when you belong to God, and you trust in God. I want you to know God always has a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you may not be able to see it. Okay. There, there are things that he's doing working outside of the situation and in the inside of the situation. And many times we don't know what's going on. But the thing that we have to learn to do is just trust God. That's it. And so therefore what she did is she let him go. Yeah. Yes. She let him go. But as a result, God already had something waiting for him. Yeah. Bible says in verse 5, Pharaoh's daughter just happened to be here. <laughs> All right. She, she just happened to be going out to, to take a bath at that time. Lord Jesus. She, she just happened to have a servant that, that would actually go out there and, and, and you know, go in and get the child or the, that basket that they saw. Yeah. She, she just happened to open it up and, 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 and the baby was crying. Yeah. yeah. And she just happened to be somebody that was a sympathizer. Yeah. Somebody that, that didn't have it in their mind that we need to kill Jewish boys. But instead, she had the mindset to, to have compassion on this child. What? How God can, I'm telling you, God, God is not so, his hand is not short. No, no. And so therefore, sometimes just because we think that God is only working through people that, that, that love him, I'm telling you, God, he knows the disposition of all people. Yes, he does. And he's able to work through believers and unbelievers in order to accomplish his will. Yeah. Yeah. Because he knows the disposition. You look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah's praying and praying and praying and praying, and then finally goes in front of a king that's a pagan king. Yeah. Yes, and the king right. evidently, because of the relationship, looks at him and gives him everything that he needs. Yeah, Lord, 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 Bill, amen. Yeah. God knows how to give you favor. Yeah, he yeah. does. He knows how to give you favor. Lord. And so here it is, this little baby boy, who, who's evidently the mandate says, any baby boy, you fine, kill him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And here is the daughter of the king that said kill him. Yeah. And she looks at him and she has compassion. All right. Oh, Lord. Can't say that's not God. Okay. My Lord. That's God. That's God and his protection. God has ways of working that we can't understand. Can I do it? Because God is accomplishing his will. Yeah. yeah. It says that she saw the basket in the reeds. She sent a female to get it. She opened it, saw the baby. He was crying. She felt sorry for them. She Ooh. recognized this is one of the Hebrew babies. She knew who he was. Yeah. Sure not. And then the Bible says that that the sister came up to the Pharaoh's daughter. <laughs> Isn't this interesting? Yeah. She came up and she said, shall I go get yeah. one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for Lord, you? Lord, and yeah. his daughter doesn't have the ability to take care of it. Yeah. And so therefore, here it is, the, the sister who's, who's waiting for the right opportunity. Sometimes your children might be in situations that are negative, and there are other people who can't get them at the moment, but there are sometimes certain <laughs> moments where Amen. Everybody has that moment where yeah. somebody's able to go to them and help them in a very, very specific time of need. Lord Amen. 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 Thank God Amen. for those people like that. Amen. Oh, Lord. Amen. She said, you know what, can I go get someone? And it's interesting that the, the daughter of Pharaoh said, yeah, you can. And, and, and she says, go get her, and I'll even pay her. Pay her. Yes. <laughs> I'll even right. pay her. Yes. So here it is, you got Jochebed, uh -huh. who had the faith to let him go. Yeah. And now she has the responsibility 
yeah. of being able to still nurture her child. Yes, sir. And get paid yes. for it. My Lord. I'm telling you, if you're at a point in your life where you feel that your resources are out, just let go and trust God. Yeah. Amen. Because God is always able to make a way even when it appears that there is no way. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. This is awesome text. Amen. It's an awesome Amen. text because you, you know that there's there's something else that was said. I, I was reading in Acts the seventh chapter. Stephen. Yeah. Stephen, the first Christian martyr. Oh, yes. Come on. Was preaching a sermon. Yes. Yeah. He, he was talking about Moses. Oh Lord. And see that there were some things that Jacobed could not give to Moses that Lord. God wanted Moses to have. Yeah. You see, the Bible says in, in Acts the seventh chapter that, that Moses was educated as an Egyptian. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was taught in all the ways oh, of, of the Egyptians. Yes. In fact, the Bible says that 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 he had the gift of powerful speech. You know, a lot of people Amen. point Moses and try to say that he was a yes, yeah. I don't believe that he was a southern. <laughs> Because when you look at that, it says that he was mighty in speech. Yeah. And when you look at later on in his life, and he's he's saying um, uh, he was making excuses about his speech. I think the thing is, is Moses had been away from that environment for forty years. Yeah. And now all of a sudden he's called to go and talk to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Let and him so go. Therefore, he feels inadequate as a speaker because he knows what it means to be a speaker on that level. Yeah. He understands that. Oh, Lord. But he was educated as an outsider. Yeah. But even though he was educated as an outsider, he always knew who he was. Yeah. I'm telling you, when God opens up the ability for you to be able to go in life and your children and go in life and, and begin to excel in life, yeah. don't ever forget who you are. Oh. Don't ever forget where you come from. Amen. Don't ever get to the point where you turn your back on those that, amen, because everybody don't have the same opportunity that you may have had. Amen. And one of the things that we began to notice in Moses is Moses got to the point where he never forgot who he was. And as a result, God sent him back with all of the giftedness that he's gotten that his other brothers and sisters didn't have. But yeah. he came back and he became the emancipator for his people. That's it. But ultimately, it was the hand of God, y'all. Amen. Amen. What's the message to you? The message to you is that you got to let go. Yeah. And let go. Amen. That's the message that you have today. Let go and just trust God. Amen. Recognize you need to do all that you can. Mm -hmm. And when you do all that you can and you run to the end of work, because you're going to recognize that we're all powerless at some point in our life. Amen. Yeah. We all get to the point where we don't have the power anymore. No more. And I don't know what it is that gets you to the point to recognize that you don't have the power. Uh -huh. Amen. It might be that a health situation comes and you recognize that your power's running. Right. It might be that you're at the bottom of, of, of a glass of alcohol and you recognize that you have no power. Right. It might be that you're involved in some kind of drug situation and you get to the point where you recognize that you don't have the power. It might be that you're down and out and you don't have any place to go and you don't know which way to turn that you recognize. In other words, all of us get to the point where we may hit rock bottom at some point in our life. Yeah. Amen. But I want you to know wherever you are, whenever you get there. Yes, sir. Come on. Let go. Let go. Yeah. Let go. Yes, Lord. Because God is able. God is able to take you to another level. Yes, yes. God is able to provide you everything that you need in order to get you yes, where you need to be. Our God is an awesome God. He is an awesome God. And He is a way maker. Yes, yes. That's our God. He's a way maker. There's a song. There's a song that. That, 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 that we sing, and, and y'all remember us singing it. In fact, I'm going to ask you everyone to stand up. Everybody just stand up. It's interesting that this, this book is the way out because God is creating the way out for his people by using an individual who becomes a great leader. Yeah. But it's, that it's really God that made a way. Yeah. And if God can make a way for him, God can make a way for you. Oh, yes, he can. Because he is. A way maker. Oh, yes, yes. He's a miracle worker. Yes, yes. Our God is a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. I don't know who's in the dark right now. Lord, Lord. Yes. If you're in the dark, I want you to know that he can give you light. 
He can change your situation around. He can fix things in your life. I don't know where you are, what you're dealing with in your life, but I want you to know that God is sending a message to you right now saying, I've got this. Amen. He's saying, I can fix it for you. Just let go and let me. That's what God yeah. is saying to you. Yeah. Will you acknowledge him today? Please. As your way maker? Right. Oh, Lord. Will you make a commitment to him and allow him to be the one that guides your feet and guides your step? Jeremiah said, oh, Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walk into the direct steps. Yes, You're so busy trying to guide yourself and you keep guiding yourself in the wrong direction. But I want you to know he's able to lead you in the right direction. All yes. you got to do is say, Lord, here am I. Yes. Oh. Me. My Lord. Can you make that change today in the life of the My Lord. Lord. If you're here, there are individuals that are up here in the front. They want to pray for you. Amen. Lord, Amen. They, they, they want to help you. If you need counsel right now, you need somebody to talk to you. If you need somebody that you can call and, and communicate with, why don't you come and make that connection right now? Come on. Amen. Amen. If you're here, I want you to know Jesus is calling you. Yes, he is. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and have labor. He says, I'll give you rest. rest. Yes. He said, take my yoke and learn of me. Yes. The lonely in heart, you'll find rest. Do you need rest right yeah. now? He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. Yeah. He wants you to come to him. Yes, Lord. If you don't know Jesus, why don't you come today? Amen. Amen. All you have to do is come Amen. down. Amen. Give him your heart. I'm telling you, he'll work within it. He'll clean you up. He'll clean you make up. you a new creature in Christ. Brand new. All he wants you to do is submit your life to him. Yeah. Give everything, accept him in faith. Yeah. I tell you what, he'll wash your sins away and he'll he'll make an everlasting relationship with you. Continually cleaning you up from all of your unrighteousness because he is a way maker. Amen. As we sing this song. If you need to come, don't hesitate. Amen. Just come Amen. and make a way for you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Lord, you are.